Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason Jensen and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. In today's episode, we're going to build a gas station from Foscale Models. We are continuing to work on our large diorama. So the gas station is right here in front. And this was a free kit offered from Foscale Models. And I believe once a year, Foscale Models offers a free kit uh, with a purchase of a certain dollar amount. So be sure to visit their website uh, so that you don't miss out on the next one. All right, so let's head over to the workbench and get started. So here is a picture of the kit that we're going to be working on. And this will go with our diorama that we are building right here in the front. So as you can see, we have to cut a little bit out of the back corner to fit um, against this building here. And then we're also going to add just a little bit of length uh, to the side of it. So I've already stained my pieces just using a uh, black acrylic paint that's been watered down, watered down a lot and brushed on um, to prevent it from warping. I did both sides at the same time. Next we're going to use vintage white and we're going to sponge on uh, the color to give it a peeled paint look. So we're just dipping the paint, dipping the sponge into the paint. And then sponging it on. I'll show you what this looks like up close. As soon as I get it done, I know my hand's probably in the way. I did get it a little bit heavy in some of the cracks, so I'm just going to take the back side of my blade and run it through just to get some of that paint out of the cracks. And again, I'm using the back side of the blade, not the, the uh, pointed edge, just the back side. That way we're not cutting into the wood. Okay, I'll go ahead and do the rest of these and then we'll move on to the next step. As you can see, the uh, white is all done. And next we're going to move on to painting our trim uh, a deep red color. So we're just using the same technique So I first stained this um, just using the watered down uh, black acrylic paint and then let it dry and now we're just going over it with the red. Now 
And depending on how aged and beat up you want it to look will depend on how uh, heavy or light you go with your sponge. Next, I'm painting the doors and windows uh, a gray. I'm just using uh, neutral gray. And then after this dries, we'll sponge our red over the top of it. So as you can see, I'm not brushing it on neat at all. Just kind of dabbing it on because the, uh, the red will cover up a lot of it. Okay, next we'll take our sponge and, well first, we will dry it. Now we'll take our sponge and put some red on it. You want to go really light so that you're not getting big splotchy dots on it. And you're gonna go heavier towards the top and less towards the bottom. Because more of the paint would be wore off at the bottom of the door from people kicking it, stuff bumping into it, and from the weather. So there'd be more red paint uh, towards the top than at the bottom. So here's our gas station so far. Um, I'm currently working on the roof. I'll add tar paper to this and a little smokestack. The wall right now is pretty delicate because it's just being held with glue right there in the corner. So it's a little hard for me to show you, uh, but there are uh, a lot of signs put on it. I think I may run one beam right in the center to hold that in place. And I still have uh, the windows and the clear plastic to put in place. So for the interior of our little uh, gas station garage, um, I had this casting that I simply cut in half. And then, well I cut it in half using um, the saw. Then I took an X-Acto knife and carved off one of the drawers. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. The stuff is really easy to carve. Um, you'll see here, I, I carved the end of that and put a split in the board. 
it's pretty small I don't know if you can see it but you can carve it you can add wood grain to it now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue these two together like that and that will go in the corner of our little garage and I'm going to have it sitting up on um, barrels I'm also going to put some signs inside of the garage in one of the signs I'm going to use the FOSS logo so I'll rust it up using my sponge and some acrylic paint and then brush on some rust colored pastel chalk and make it look like an old metal sign So to rust our little FOSS sign, I'm going to uh, scrub my little brush over the rust colored pastel, it's kind of an orange color. Even go a little bit with the the reddish color. Now we will use burnt umber. And we will just paint the edges. I think I will end up making some more little metal FOSS signs because I have lots of instructions laying around that have the FOSS logo on it that I can just cut out and rust up and glue it on. Now I'm dry brushing some streaks on it. We can even very lightly Add some little dots. Like it's starting to rust. I will hold it up to the camera in a second so that you can see it. Next, I'm going to glue my two little benches together and I'm simply going to rough up the smooth edge that I cut with sandpaper. Might make them stick a little better. And at the same time, on this piece, I'm adding wood grain to it. And I'm using a 150 grit sandpaper. To glue them together, I'm going to use a super glue. I'm 
I'm just going to hold it in place until it sits up a little bit. That's the thing I love about using a Loctite is that you do have a few seconds to adjust the parts before it completely sets up. Okay, so there is our little workbench and we'll get that primed and painted. For our little workbench, we're going to put three barrels underneath it. I am going to cut these down a little bit so that it's not so tall. I might have better luck doing them one at a time. So I'm going to cut them off of the sprue and then since all of them are marked now I'll just go ahead and cut each one so as you can see the roof is done on our little gas station this one will be removable so that you'll be able to see all of the detail in the shop same with all of these. I will show you up close Next, we're gonna paint our little workbench. So I've glued it all together. Uh, I put a gray primer on it. And the next thing is to start with the wood. So we're gonna use desert sand. And we'll also use a little bit of burnt umber. is basically dry brushing so you want your brush pretty dry just a little bit of the burnt umber and we'll start on the back side just to get a feel for what it's going to look like before we move on to the top and front. And again, we're just dry brushing so that we're leaving the cracks of the uh, wood grain and the individual boards. And ignore all the uh, tools and everything on there. Just paint right over them. Don't even worry about them. We'll come back in later and paint those with a small detail brush. I love painting these little castings. Um, it's so fun and relaxing for me. And I'm just adding a little bit of the burnt umber just to give it a little variety. Okay, that's what we have so far. Next, we are going to paint the barrels. I'm going to start off with a yellow one. And we're going to use antique gold. 
I'm going to do the barrel right on the end here. And I'm going to paint the entire barrel. Sometimes I'll give it a white stripe. But I think I'm going to go solid with these. Now when you're painting these, the most important thing is to apply it smooth so that it's not rough or clumpy you're not losing any of the detail and don't worry about covering it completely I don't know if you can see that it's not solid we'll let that dry and then we'll go back over it with uh, another thin coat if if we want to otherwise we could just leave it um, I'll wash my brush again quick and we'll do a green one I'm using Hauser medium green Again, just making sure that it's smooth. At this stage, more important to go smooth than to get it all covered. You can always go over it with a second coat if you want it to be a, a brighter green. Now I'm going to use baby blue. It seems a little bit light. Um, I'm going to go in with blue harbor. We'll just dip it right in there. And just kind of mix the two together. I like using multiple colors uh, just because it gives it even more of a custom look. And that's why I don't mind um, dipping my brush in, in other containers um, it doesn't alter the color all that much but I think it does give it uh, a little different look than just straight out of the bottle okay I don't think I need to go over any more of those Okay, so that'll be it for uh, this brush, which is a little big. We'll set that aside and use our smaller brushes. Next, there are two cans on the top uh, that we'll paint. Um, We'll use a uh, sea breeze. And all of these paints that I'm using are under a dollar. This may seem a little bright now. But when we're done, we'll put a wash over the entire casting and uh, it'll tone some of the colors down. 
And again, I know I've mentioned this many times, but this casting is from RustyRail.com. They have both HO scale and O scale castings. They're highly detailed. Um, they're all resin. So there is our little our little can. Okay, we'll rinse our brush. Uh, now for the next can, let's use let's use red. I'm going to use a uh, French French wine. I don't use a uh, straight red because I think it's way too bright. So I usually go with a deep red or like this one, a uh, French wine. It's just a little darker shade of red. And because we have the primer on it, the uh, colors stick really well. It's very important to Put a primer on your castings first even if they are the uh, the white metal or even just plastic um, you should always prime your uh, detail parts first before you paint them okay there is our red can Again, it's looking looking kind of colorful right now, but uh, it won't be. We'll put a dark wash over it and then also add some rust to some of this. Um, there is a, a metal piece, just a flat piece of metal um, sitting on top of the workbench. So we're going to paint that next. And for that, we're going to use raw umber. Now you'll notice I haven't put the lids on any of my paints um, that way if I need to quick touch something up or add a little bit more color to it I can I'm gonna thin this a little bit I'm just adding some water to my brush next we're going to use silver and right here you always want to shake uh, metallic paints really well because a lot of those uh, little metallic particles or flakings whatever they are settle to the bottom so just make sure you uh, shake it really well. And we'll do all the little tools on the workbench. For this, we're going to switch to even a smaller brush. And I bought all these brushes in a set at Michael's. Uh, but you could also get them at Hobby Lobby or any art supply store. Uh, but they're pretty inexpensive. So just take your time. And it's almost like dry brushing. 
you're just dragging your brush over the raised area and don't worry if you do get it on your other surfaces say your workbench or on a can uh, because you know if you have you can just pick up another brush dip it in the other color touch it up a little bit go back to painting now some of these tools I'm painting them all silver but we'll go back in maybe and paint the handle a different color um, we'll do more to them So like I said, these castings are very detailed, uh, really nice. Okay, maybe the, there seems to be a, a mallet that's on there. Uh, let's paint the handle of that, maybe a different color. We'll use raw sienna. So we'll wash our brush, making sure it's nice and dry. Just a little bit of paint. Okay, next I'm going to add a little bit of rust here and there. I'm going to use an AK product, Dark Rust. And we're just going to first go along the bottom of the barrels. Then we'll wipe a lot of the paint off of our brush. And then streak it down sorry I'm off camera I'm just gonna do some streaks and then as even more paint comes off your brush and starts to dry then you can really start to dry brush and lightly drag it over the sides of the barrel so that just those little ribs that are on there um, are the only thing getting painted really. I don't know if you'll be able to see. And we'll also go ahead and put a little bit of that rust maybe on the uh, the can. Maybe just on the ridge of the can. Next, we'll do another AK product, this time old rust. If you don't have the, the AK products, uh, something like Burnt Umber would work. We'll do very little of this, but again we'll start by going around the bottom edge of the cans or the barrels okay that's all we'll do of that and then for our last one we'll do chipping color this is definitely the darkest this is a little bit more like raw umber but a little bit darker in my opinion So we'll just do a little bit of spotting here and there. 
and maybe we'll hit the edge of this uh, red can. A little towards the bottom of it. Same on this can here. Uh, right around the top of our handle on the hammer. And then maybe a little bit in the corners of this uh, metal sheet that's on the workbench. Just to kind of accent it so it pops out a little bit more. So there Hopefully you can see that. Um, hold on, let me do this. That's better. Next, we're going to put our wash over it. For this, we'll go back to our bigger brush. And we're going to use black. Probably too much. Really doesn't take much. Okay, now lots of water. Now there's a lot of people that also use um, rubbing alcohol with India ink. That works great. I've definitely used it before. And again, we're gonna wanna test this on the back side. This part can be a little bit scary. You're like, oh no, I'm ruining it. <laughs> but you're not. And if, let's say you did go too dark with it and you don't like it. Um, you can scrub it in hot soapy water. Take some of the paint off and prime it again and start over. As it dries, it definitely lightens also. Um, so really it comes with uh, experience. You'll find out, like I said, at first, you'll think that you're wrecking it, but um, you're not. You just have to practice and experiment with the paint and see how it works. I'm just going in a little bit darker around uh, some of the tools so that they stand out a little bit more. So again, I'll hold it up close so that you can see it. still uh, wet so it's probably hard to hard to see but it definitely goes in all of the cracks and shadows put shadows in all the cracks sorry okay now we'll dry this quick 
make sure our brush is good and clean. Next, if you want to, um, I'm going to put some stains on the workbench with engine oil. Maybe some on the barrels too. This you want to shake it really, really well. Now this is not water base. So we'll use mineral spirits to clean it up. So we're just dabbing a little bit of it here and there, making it run down the front of the workbench. Um, putting some of it like on the wrench. So I just put some running down the front. You can see I've put a couple little puddles on there. Maybe we'll soak some of that up. Okay. Then maybe a little bit on the barrel. Okay, there. Not much. Now again, for cleanup on that brush, uh, we're going to use uh, mineral spirits. Okay, for the last step, um, let me quick blow dry this. So for the very last step, we'll do a little bit of light dry brushing. So I'm going to use a vintage white. Any off-white will work. So I'm just dipping it in the white and then getting most of it off. And again, we're going to do very little of this. And I'm just going to hit the edges. I'm going to start by hitting the edges of the wood. Like the handles on the drawers. The edge of the workbench. You'll find that the more paint that comes off of the brush and it dries pretty quick, so it's drying on the brush. The easier that it is to um, dry brush. You can see now that most of the paint on the brush is dry or gone, so I'm able to just scrub over the piece and it puts little highlights. Do just a little on the barrel, not much at all. You want it, I want it to look pretty grimy and dirty. Okay, that is it. That piece is finished. So as you can see, I've cleaned up all my paints, put them all away. Next, we're going to uh, glue in the detailed casting. So I'm going to use uh, super glue. And we're 
we're just going to put a dab on the bottom and maybe a couple dots on the back side. Okay. It's a little tricky to get in here. Especially because I don't want to get glue on anything else. Okay. Next, we'll go in with some pastel chalks and put some dirt and stains on the floor of the shop. So I quick ran my blow dryer over it to make sure that the glue was completely dry. Especially with um, super glue, you don't want to be brushing around it and get some of that super glue on the end of your brush. It'll instantly seal all the hairs together and you'll just have to throw away the brush so so make sure that glue is completely dry now i'm just gonna brush over my black pastel and then just brush it right onto the floor And really just going in places where I think that um, people would be walking, where there would be stains. So I've got a clear piece of acetate. And as you can see, it's pretty dirty and scratched up. and uh, But that's okay. I think it just adds to the age and character of the building. So we'll set these on here. And cut out two little pieces. Sorry, I think I was off camera there a little bit. Okay, so there is our two pieces. In our two windows. Next, I'm going to use full strength Elmer's glue. And we're just putting just a very small amount in the corners. It's just a little dot. Probably can't see that, but it's very little glue. You don't it doesn't take much. And then we'll set it right down on the piece of plastic. Make sure you're not gluing it to the, the mat or the surface you're working on. And same with this one. So you're just getting a little bit of glue coming out of the end of it. And then you're lightly pressing the window against the glue.
And if you want to lightly dab it onto the side, just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. I don't know if you can see, but I'm just dabbing it on the, the bottle a little bit to smooth it out. And then we'll set it right on to the plastic. Easier said than done. <laughs> okay. You want to make sure that it's lined up on there. Okay, it's in place so we can gently press it down. I'll show you the first one. Now if you want to, you can flip this over so we're on the back side and you can take uh, I would recommend using a brand new blade and very lightly you can crack the back side of it by just drawing lines on it Uh, hold it up. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Um, maybe if I put a piece of black paper behind it. I don't know if you can see that, but... It gives the illusion that it's cracked. Okay, before I glue those into place, I am going to dry brush uh, the edge of those windows so it looks a little more aged. So we'll start on the side one. And just drag our brush. There's very little paint on the brush. We're just dragging it sideways over it. Okay, we'll do the same on the back side. Not a good way to hold this. And we can do a little bit on the trim if we want to. Just so it matches a little better. Just want to be very careful when you're handling your model so you don't accidentally break off any little pieces. Now we'll glue those in place. The one that we cracked, I'm going to put um, I'm going to put that one on the back.
this one. So we're going to run a little bit of super glue right along the top edge of it. And we're going to glue this so that it looks like it's opened. I might have to get a better hold of it. There. Okay, so we'll hold it there for a second. Let that glue set up. Okay, now we'll do the same on the back side. This one will be interesting because there's a garage door and I'm not sure if it's in the way or not. So I'm just grabbing it in the center with the tweezers and put a little bit of glue along the top. Yeah, that door is in the way. We'll hold that for a second till it sits up. So it's opened a little bit. Uh, that's as far as I can go because of that other garage door is right there. So I also have the roof card finished. Uh, I just, same technique, I put my black tar paper on there. And then the kit came with a, a stencil. I'll show you. So I laid my stencil on there. Then, um, took a short haired brush and dabbed on uh, my paint. Then I took some uh, white pastels. It's actually a really light gray. You can see um, right there in the center, a really light gray one right there um, and then just brushed some on and drug it down so it looked like some of the paint is washing down from the rain and I will this will always be loose it'll be removable so I'll probably end up gluing a little strip of wood like a sixteenth inch strip uh, right there so that it catches on there and doesn't slide down and then I'll also add uh, a cap using some light gray of the paper uh, put a strip across there but I won't glue it on this part so it'll fit under there and then lock in so that it can easily be removed, but at the same time won't won't slide down. So
And then we have our structure that will sit on there. Like so. And then on the other side, we have our other shop. And first we'll put our little roof on so that we can see where it lines up. And there we have it. We have two little posts that we need to add coming down right here. And there's a gas pump that goes in between there. Um, I also need to add a sign that I make in the computer uh, for that opening right there. We'll zoom out a little bit so you get an overall look. I'll quick show you the picture from the kit so you can see uh, the two posts that I was talking about and the gas pump. Um, I have to make those yet. And I'll probably add that little smokestack on there too. So, so you can see uh, for the inside of it, um, I actually cut out the FOSS logo from there for the inside. And I'll show you quick. So there is the FOSS sign from the instructions. Uh, another piece from the instructions, um, right there on the front of the door, you can see the FOSS. That is from another set of instructions and it's next to the copyright information. So it's actually pretty small. So. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, I, I've mentioned it before, but I think it's very important to say it again. Uh, I am just showing you techniques that I use. Uh, I prefer to model more of a beat up, uh, rusted old look. Uh, but you should definitely model in the style or way that that you like uh, you should get as much enjoyment out of this hobby as as possible um, i hope all of you watching uh, get as much enjoyment out of this hobby as i do uh, i truly love it so please again uh model in a style that fits you fits your layout and what you're comfortable with so well, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to click on that bell up in the corner to be notified when I upload more videos. Until next time, happy modeling.